Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. I'm going to be playing some more with Distress Oxide sprays. Just having so much fun with them. So, this card is for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. And I pulled out the Detail Bohemian Plate Wafer Dye from Simon's Stamp. This was released back in December, I think. Yeah, love it. It die cuts an A2 size piece of cardstock or whatever you use it on and then it pierces all this detail so I had some Canson like a piece of Canson watercolor paper and it was big enough to get two out of so I was like why not make two cards so that's what I did <clears throat> I ran this through my die cut machine and then I'll just show you guys like the detail because it's oh, love it love it just beautiful detail so I wanted to experiment spraying oxide sprays over it just because so I have my splat box I have just a piece of paper towel in my splat box this just helps kind of absorb some of the excess when you're using a lot of sprays because otherwise especially my splat box because it's so saturated that too much liquid is just going to pool up and make a mess FYI I did I do have some bamboo paper towel coming I plan on using that in my craft room. I honestly don't use paper towel very much and I like to like reuse it if it's not fully saturated. Anyway, anyway, that'll be in a later video. So I'm using Kitsch Flamingo. That's my pink. That's the new one. And then Squeeze Lemonade and Peacock Feathers and Wilted Violet. And this first piece was kind of more of an experiment really. <laughs> I sprayed it with water first, sprayed it rather heavily I felt it was too heavy, so I kind of blotted it off on that paper towel, but because the paper towel has all this pattern, of course, it immediately picked up the pattern of the paper towel, which I did not want, but because these are distressed products and all that, you can layer them. So I just kind of kept spraying with a little bit of water, adding a little bit more distress oxide spray. I have this um, washcloth in my office that I use for like cleaning, like wiping up my desk, etc. that I just keep like rinsing out and reusing just like my flower sack towel. And I was using that as well to kind of mop up the excess without transferring any real pattern. And then once I was happy with this first piece, I just set it aside to let it dry. And I'm basically going to do the same thing with the second piece, just trying not to spray it quite as heavily. I'm letting the colors somewhat mix, but not fully. Because of course, if you start mixing colors, you can get like a pretty green with the yellow and the blue. You can get more purples, all that kind of stuff. Um, oranges with the yellow and the pink. But because I wanted to keep this closer to the color throwdown challenge, I didn't want a lot of mixing. A little bit is fine. So you could totally do this with just ink pads and the ink smushing that I've shown in a ton of videos. I'm just really loving the sprays because it's just so much more unexpected a little bit more unpredictable and i like you know the splattery effects and things like that like the way this dry just i love it so these are completely dry and then all i was doing was spraying water into my hands and flicking it over just to get a little bit of the water blot technique and then again you pick up the water with a paper towel it lightens the area that's what i'm talking about, about like reusing paper towel that piece i'll just keep reusing it I do, you know, the blotting techniques, then I'll use it to like wipe my paintbrushes on and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Anywho, after I had splattered the water and picked it up, I took my Perfect Pearl powder and mixed that with some water and then splattered this heavily over both of these backgrounds. Like I use up every little bit there that's just on my craft mat <laughs> because it's just a little bit isn't enough. Like this shimmery splatter. And it's one of those things like right now it looks like nothing. But it's when you turn whatever you're working on into the light, it picks up that shimmer from the Perfect Pearl powder. So I just kept swirling it with my paintbrush and then just splattering it all over these backgrounds. Once I had used it all up, wiped off my work surface, let these completely dry. And then I've got these splattery, rainbowy backgrounds with all of this piercing detail from that detail bohemian plate and because I don't want to cover up very much these backgrounds all I'm going to do is add a die cut sentiment so this is the paper hugs wafer dye and this was released back in December too I think so I die cut it 
multiple times from white cardstock as well as a layer from Simon Silver Holographic cardstock, which is just life. So normally I only do like three layers. That's kind of my OCD when it comes to stacking sentiments. It's like three layers. This time I did three layers of white and then I'm going to top it with a holographic. I wanted it just, I wanted this fairly hefty just to really sort of stand out against the background. So I stacked the layers together with some craft tacky glue and then added a bit more craft tacky glue onto the top layer of the white die cut and then press down the holographic die cut and oh, love it. Love it. I need to, I've been hoarding. I have, you know, all the Simon holographic papers because there's different like color schemes and patterns and all that stuff. And I don't, I don't know why I've been hoarding it. It just, I have been, I need to use it more. So I did that with both die cuts and then my little companion sentiments are the inside and out thank you sentiment strips. I have used tons of the different sentiment strips in videos. I really love this pack because it literally is meant for inside and outside your cards. So there's like a sentiment and then a companion sentiment to go on the inside. I love that. I love it. So I trimmed down the ones I wanted to use. And then while I had my paper trimmer out, I grabbed a few scraps of just white cardstock and trimmed down a few little strips just so I can adhere these behind the narrow strip that I'm going to adhere to the front of the card. I didn't want to use foam tape or anything like that because I already have the like dimension from the paper hug sentiment. So I just adhered two little strips of cardstock together and then topped it with this sentiment strip. So it gives it a teeny bit of dimension, but not, you know, thick foam tape sort of dimension. So I adhered those together. And then um, I'm also going to trim down these backgrounds just a little bit. They are A2, this detail bohemian plate cuts everything A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I wanted it slightly smaller than my card front. So the card base ends up, um, you know, framing it a little bit. So I roughly trimmed off about an eighth of an inch off each side. So it ends up being like four by five and a quarter, something like that, just slightly smaller. So after those are trimmed, I'm going to adhere my die cut sentiments to these card fronts with the craft tacky glue, just kind of eyeballing and lining everything up using my grid mat. And then I'm going to adhere the little sentiment strip right into the middle there. So it says paper hugs and then the sentiment strip says, I just want to say thank you. And so I got those adhered to both of my card fronts. And then I'm going to put Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of these. Again, thin dimension, not a ton, just because. <laughs> Can't not have the Big Mama foam tape, you know? It's not as bulky as regular foam tape. That's also why I like it so much because it's about half, about half as thick, roughly. So I put that in the back of the card fronts and I'm going to adhere these to top folding white note cards that are A2 sized. So I'm going to get those adhered into place. And then after I do that with both of these card fronts, I'm going to adhere the remaining sentiment to the inside of the card. So the outside says, I just want to say thank you. And then the inside says, and tell you that you are appreciated and I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. Love it. So got those adhered. As always, you could end here, but I wanted to add just a little bit of embellishment. So I just grabbed some white pearls from my stash. I went with white because they're kind of iridescent. So they kind of reflect in a similar way to the holographic cardstock and pick up the colors that are used on the background. So I just adhere those into place with some little dabs of craft tacky glue and my embellishment wand. And then as a final little bit, I'm just going to pair these cards with some little happy yellow envelopes. And that's going to finish off both of these cards. So I will have links below the video in the description box. I will link to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll link to the color throwdown challenge. I'll have picture links to all the supplies used, all that info. Check that out in the description box below the video if you were interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.